that uh, in the handicap department here. Uh, I've worked five years with the Northern Ohio Golf Association, so uh, in, in this course rating, handicapping, member services role. Uh, so similar to like the Metropolitan Golf Association, we, they serve uh, Northeast Ohio, Cleveland, Akron area, and all the golf courses uh, over there. And I've been with the USG now for about 19 months, 18 months, something like that. So um, looking forward to uh, speaking with you all uh, today. Uh, first and foremost, the guides that you guys all have probably in front of you or that you're used to seeing, these are all good through this year, right? I know in the upper left corner it says 2016 through 2017, but my sticker here on there that I, I threw on there, and, and you may, some of you may have that sticker, we're, we're keeping those valid through uh, 2019. Once the, uh, the, the World Handicap System goes into play, uh, we wanted to extend this book. So this guy, we get a lot of questions about that. This guy, the manual that you may have uh, in front of you, these are all good through uh, this year, uh, 2019. Excuse me. So, you know, with that being said, uh, in January of 2019, uh, there was a big announcement, and even prior to that, about rules modernization. Right? A, a lot of uh, PR went out from, from our side of things about you know, the different changes coming down from 34 rules to 24 and different things. But there was this concept that they were coming out with called penalty areas. And our core training committee prior to 2019 uh, with the USGA had to figure out how are we going to apply these new penalty areas within the core training system, right? How are we going to apply all of this, all of these new ideas and this new changes? So what we did, we did a lot of research and testing based on scoring data, based on course rating data, based on members of the, of, of the committee. And what, we, and what was determined by that committee, our committee, was we were going to rate, uh, sort of create a, a category called obstacles. And just like how we combine out of bounds and extreme rough, right? We're just gonna add one more called penalty area. So we're talking about obstacles, and then we're gonna rate them two different ways, crossing them and, and then laterally. So this is good, you're gonna hear me sort of like a broken record all, all morning this morning, is this idea of obstacles being rated two different ways, Crossing and lateral, when we talk about penalty areas, we talk about out of bounds or extreme rough, right? And I'll go through some examples later on on the screen here and walk through some things as to how we would rate, you know, each of these situations based on, uh, you know, rules modernization and those sticker inserts that you may have uh, in your book right now uh, for for this season. <coughs> so just a. Uh, a quick introduction here. Uh, penalty areas, what is a penalty area? <coughs> it includes all the areas that were already called, right, uh, water hazards previous to this year. So, you know, lateral water hazard or, water ha or a water hazard is now a penalty area in 2019. That is the new vernacular. You know, I still stumble sometimes, get tongue tied a little bit every once in a while, and I even call them water hazards. I gotta get them out of my system, right? It's now penalty area. That is the term that, that, that we use in golf, right? And it can also be any other area on the golf course that the committee chooses to define a penalty area. So areas that used to be called extreme rough uh, in 2018, the, the committee at the club could go ahead and actually call that and refer that to as a penalty area. And we'll talk through you know, situations and, and what would happen and how this really you know, how this affects it uh, minorly to the uh, course rating system. And if you're a captain who inputs the system into the data or sends it to, to Tim or Kevin uh, at the end of your, uh, your time on the golf course, um, it's a very simple thing that, that we can use. So we'll take a look at that. So any areas that used to be called water hazards, whether they were lateral or just water hazards, as well as it can be any area that used to be extreme rough, for example, or uh, out of bounds. Any questions on that? Excellent. All right. Whoops. All right. So, like I said, like I mentioned earlier, the committee last year uh, tested with different procedures as to ways to incorporate this crossing and lateral, 
or excuse me, in, in incorporating these penalty areas, right? And the way they came to it is one overarching category called obstacles being rated two different ways, crossing and lateral based on penalty areas, out of bounds, and extreme rough, right? So let's jump into uh, crossing uh, first. So what the crossing obstacle page, that, that first page 27, uh, it replaces out of bounds category in the course rating system. So crossing will include all areas as well as out of bounds and extreme rough. Adjustments can be used when the crossing is not full or recovery from the area is, uh, is a possibility. So if we go to that page, and I don't know if some of you have the insert in, hopefully you do, it looks like this right here. If not, Tim has some extra copies um, of the in insert. Literally, it, it was just a sticker that we overlaid onto the, the page that was fixed in it previously. Yes, sir. So all of these other categories, like bounce and, and jeopardy and everything else, does it go? <coughs> so the adjustments right. within that, so I, I'm not sure if you have that page inserted. Well, no. Co correct. So, page. Okay. But if you so, take these stickers and put them over this, correct. cover everything else. Correct. We, we cover it up so, like you said, the Jeopardy would, would not... Well, it disappears. It disappears, and this, this becomes the new page. Just what, what's on this page becomes your new page. Got it. Good question. Yeah. And then we also uh, took a look at this new local rule that the uh, rules department uh, put into place about um, lost, you know, you know, the local rule for a OB lost ball you know, being dropped in the nearest fairway, that we, we found that didn't have any impact uh, on course ratings. Because course ratings uh, take a look at, uh, just like the handicap system, the 10 best of 20 of your scratch golfer. So if a player continues to hit balls out of bounds, out of bounds, out of bounds, out of bounds, the score is posted, but it is not, it is not a part of the calculation of that player's handicap index. You know, because that differential is so high that it's outside the school. So we found that it did not uh, impact it anywhere significant enough where uh, the new local rule would affect it. Yes? So, out of bounds, from which play cannot be continued, and penalty area can be continued play, or is the same? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And we'll talk about how we go about doing that. There's, there's different adjustments within the system that we put in place that 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 you apply differently. But yes, we're all working from the same page. Just like out of bounds and extreme rough, you know, in the previous book, two very different things, right? Very different. But we combine those two within the old, within what I'll call the old book, meaning last year's and in the previous years. Oop. Right. Hit a button and I shouldn't have. There we go. All right. So, with that being said, we also had to do something that, that the course rating system and the course rating committee hasn't done in over 40 years, and that is adjust weightings within <coughs> the course rating system. Now, as you know, or as you may or may not know, rather, we've got you know the 10 obstacle factors. But the 10 obstacle factors aren't all treated equally. They're all weighted differently for both bogey and the scratch golfer, right? Because trees impact the bogey golfer a lot more, you know, you know, based on testing than the scratch golfer. And the green target affects the scoring for the scratch golfer more than the, the bogey golfer. So we have different weightings within the, the course rating system based on the par three holes that you play and the par fours and fives uh, that you play. <coughs> Excuse me. So, uh, down there at the bottom, right, we've got my scratch and bogey golfers. And the, in the old system on part fours and fives, we weighted uh, out of bounds and extreme rough in the 2018 version at 10% and 9% respectively for scratch and bogey, both men and women. These, these numbers are both for men and women. Right? Now we're jumping up at least on the bogey side, to 13%. Uh, percent. Uh, the rationale behind that for the bogey player, whether it's a bogey male player or bogey female player, 
it's very intimidating for that player to hit over something, right? They have to hit over the trouble. They cannot avoid one way or the other to get to their de their ultimate destination being the green, right? They've got to play over something to get there. So that's why the course rating committee felt like it was time to bump that up, especially for this type of category, right? Uh, for that, to give that golfer uh, what they need uh, in, in the respect that it, that it deserved. If you notice on the uh, par three right here, both of them jumped up by 3% uh, there. The rationale behind that is, you know, it's the same rationale for the bogey golfer in respect. Players got to play over something, right, to get to the green on par three. But a scratch golfer, it's more about the target than it is the distance, right? For a par four or five, typically, maybe you see something off the tee. A scratch golfer just kind of blows it over the, you know, what's in front of them a short distance doesn't affect their mindset, right? But on the par three, I'll get to your question here in just one second. On a par three, that scratch golfer is hitting to a specific target. If the whole location is tucked, right, on one side or another, that golfer may find more trouble, you know, not necessarily, they don't have trouble flying it over, but it's the accuracy that they're playing with to get to that hole. So that's the rationale behind uh, changing that, both, both, not only the bogey golfer in this instance, but the scratch golfer in it. Yes, yes. go ahead. But, but, uh, my question is that the <coughs> fact that the values, rating values, is much lower, I should say much lower, for uh, bogeys for crossing, is that, is this to compensate for the fact that values are lower from the previous range? For instance, the highest value that you can see uh, on the crossing for bogey is seven, which used to be nine. So right, and, and, I'll, and I'll get to that, and I'll, get, and I'll talk to that. So yeah, and I'll, and I'll talk to that, um, the actual numbers in the chart here uh, in, in a couple slides. But I just wanted to, you know, and there's a rationale behind why that, that is. Uh, the, the numbers are a little different in the, cro in the crossing, in the new crossing tables. Um, so yes, there is a reason, uh, and I'll, I will get to that here in a moment. But yes, um, that's a good, that's a good check and good eye. Any other uh, questions? <laughs> All right. Perfect. All right. This is the uh, the slide here. Just shows exactly what your sticker looks like, right? It's a pretty simple chart to look at. I mean, you know, men come in from the, or excuse me, scratch golfers come in from the left side. Bogey comes in from the right side. Uh, not a lot. Not very uh, difficult. You know, it's still the same. Carry safely distance. You got to take 10 yards over whatever that carry safely is, whether it's a penalty area, whether it's an out of bounds, whether it's extreme rough. So we've got to kind of twist our mindset into thinking, okay, is this a penalty area, red stakes, or excuse me, yellow stakes, right? You know, if it's a pond that I got across, this penalty area, is it yellow stakes? Is it tall grass, fescue that I've got across, or is it, you know, white out of bounds stakes, right? Only two adjustments within this uh, category here, right? The percentage that we're all should be uh, very, very used to uh, within the uh, within the system. That's that hasn't uh, that hasn't changed any. Um, and the and the next one is uh, the the two adjustment, which very similar to what we what we experienced with any two adjustments in the past. Um, that is is also there um, as well. Matt? Yes. Do you want to comment on the uh, percentage adjustment? Sure. When we were down in Tampa, we talked about using certain increments. Sure. Sure, absolutely. Um, so the percentage adjustment, which is that first one, uh, right off the right off the bat, we would get our table values, and, and let me just go back to that red line isn't there. So we, we know that not all water hazards are too, there I go again. Oh. Penalty areas, excuse me, penalty areas and extreme rough aren't all created the same, right? You know, this is why the game of golf is so unique, right? When we talk about a basketball court, it's only 94 feet long with 10 foot hoops. With a baseball diamond, it's 60 feet, 6 inches and 90 foot bases. I mean, there's standards. You know, when we talk about golf, 
If I said the hole is 325 yards, is there bunkers? Is there elevation? Is there you know, trees? You know, what's what's impacting the golfer on that specific hole? So our our arena is a little different, and that's where this percentage comes into play. If we've got a very narrow, dry creek that is labeled a penalty area or set marked as a penalty area, as opposed to a you know a you know if the grass is you know you know waist high on me or shoulder high on me. You know, there's different areas where the ball can be played out of and from. So we have the ability, based on the table value, to percentage down, you know, if the ball can be played to its next destination, right, and, and have the ability to get going and, and get back into play. So if, if the ball can be played out of that penalty area, that extreme rough, 25% of the time, 50% of the time, 75% of the time, you know, just using increments of 25 to kind of you know, keep to keep it simplified. You know, you know not looking at 42 percent, not looking at 68 well, percent. And, and that was the yeah, yeah, it, it, it yeah. Was, increments of in, incre I mean, we recommend increments of you know 25, 50, 75. We understand with some of these numbers that may not come to a whole number. If it's then it becomes 90 percent, or it becomes you know, 40. it's just you know on a general basis, the the 25 percent increments. Is typically what we would what we would recommend. So good, good, good question. So when we have a one, we pick a one out and get a twenty-five percent, point seven five in our table. Or we no, we one? Well, we we only we only use whole numbers, so we round. So we would round. round. Well, that's that's true of any any percent any any percent. Yeah. Right. We, we we round. You know. I just thought maybe do something. Good. No, no, no. We use whole numbers. Yes. Uh, we're not that precise. We're not. We're precise, but not that precise. Many courses rating from the back tees. You have a situation <coughs> where a bogey golfer now has to cover water, which now is going to be a penalty area, and he can't <coughs> make it over the water. Sure. You rate it the same way as we used to. So, you know, yeah, absolutely. So what's in the front of the guy? Right here. You have bogey so no, no change there. No change. There. No change. There. All right. The big thing that you probably all notice here is this top row, right, with the zeros, right? I will go over this in one of my examples later, but yes, it is possible that you have a crossing penalty area, I'll just say penalty area, or out of bounds or extreme rough, right, that's very short, right, and you may get a zero table value and that's your final number. That is absolutely a possibility, and I will walk through an example later on to explain how we get there. We'll see one today as well on the golf course. Perfect. Perfect. But yes, yeah, so for you experienced raiders who, and I don't know the experience level of everyone in this room, um, you know, we have, we have this concept within the course rating guide about obstacles that exist within our 50 yard, you know, we call it 50 yard box, you know, for lack of better words, um, that if an obstacle exists, you, you say it's existing, uh, you have to note it within your form one, which is the document that we chart all of our numbers. And, and so this kind of goes back to that overarching theme of obstacles being rated at the top, being rated two different ways, crossing and lateral. So I will get to this, the rationale behind it uh, later with an, with an actual explanation. But the, the main purpose was, uh, ladies and gentlemen, was if you're an experienced rater, you probably know that in the previous iterations of this guide, which is, when I say previous iteration, I mean like last year. <laughs> <laughs> same guide, just different, different pages. Um, typically a crossing was absorbed by some sort of lateral OB extreme rough or water hazard when we're talking, right? And that was typical for the scratch golfer, especially, I mean, more than typical for the scratch golfer, and pretty t more than typical for, for the bogey golfer. Well, now what we didn't want to do, and kind of goes back to her question, is what we're doing with this table, we, we diluted it, definitely. But the reason why is we're, re, we're introducing points into the system that we didn't already have, right? So if we start, you know, adding these one point, one point, because I'm sure you've all seen this as course raters. In between T sets, you might have un, unmaintained grasses that would qualify as extreme rough, right, in between holes. Or especially if you maybe you go out into the desert areas of Arizona and you see sort of like this unkept rush that you sort of hit over for 25 yards, 
In the old system, we would say, well, that's, that's a point. With, with this, that's a point, that's a point. And when you start adding 12, 13, 14, 15 points for scratch and potentially a lot more for bogey, you start getting really high slope ratings, right? So we didn't want to introduce, we wanted to take a, conser uh, I say we, the course rating committee wanted to take a conservative approach with this being, you know, the first year of this, right? So yes, if it is possible to have a zero, but we will go over um, how, how that can be and can be. So um, please stay tuned uh, for that. I hope that makes sense for everybody that we're, you know, introducing new points to the system. You know, we want to make sure we give the value of what the committee feels like it deserves based on the charts that they created. But we don't want to overinflate, overinflate, so that we start getting, you know, slopes, slope ratings that are, you know, sort of out of whack. We start seeing slopes jump, you know, significantly, you know, with new ratings. Any questions on that? Perfect. Okay. What I got here are some examples of some crossing obstacles, penalty areas. <coughs> excuse me, uh, out of bounds and extreme rub. So. The first one over here, this is Jim Furyk. This is pretty self-explanatory here. Jim is hitting a, an iron shot over a penalty area, which is this pond right here onto the green. That's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, this gentleman right here is hitting his tee ball over a pond right here, which is now a penalty area, right? But I also want to take a look, that also falls into this category when we're looking at this new topic. We're also looking at stuff like this, this gorse, right, that you're hitting from this fairway location. Down to the screen might be hard to see for some of you in the back, but there's a green down here, and this is the fairway. So we have to cross over this and getting our carry safe number. Just like this gentleman here, hitting his tee ball off, off the tee, down the fairway, we've got this very tall, you know, gorse, I, you know, I don't even know, it's just, it just looks like no fun is really what it looks like. Uh, you hit it to it. That's the best way to describe it, right? Down here on the lower right corner here, uh, this is a little bit more uncommon, but I wanted to put a picture in here just to um, just to display that this does fall into this category, right? Is a out of bounds crossing. This is if you're all familiar with the 17th hole at uh, St Andrews, it's infamously called the road hole, right? There's a hotel right here that its property kind of juts into the, the line of the actual golf course, and so you do actually have to hit over the hotel's property. Uh, lines in order to reach the next fairway or you know lanes. And down in the lower left corner, um, this is a I, I think a great example of, of going back to the gentleman in the back's comment about using that percentage adjustment. So right here I've got some wispy grass, but it's it's not like this stuff up here, right guys, with this stuff right here. It's not as full and as thick. I can go down in here if I hit my ball in there and I can, you know, play it out probably at least fifty percent of the time. Maybe if I get my boots on the ground, maybe it's 75% of the time. So I get my value, you know, once I get my safe cross number, you know, probably percentage that down, you know, at least 50%, you know, when I get down there with my rating captain and, and talk about it. And then, you know, the player would play on from there. So if you see the difference between what this is and what this is and what that is, I mean, you hit it here, you hit it here, you're dead beat. You hit it here, there's a potential that you can find your golf ball and, you know, you can play on from there. Right? That's why I say, you know, all grasses, all penalty areas aren't all, you know, equal in stature. All right, any questions on any of the pictures that are in front of us <coughs> right now? Excellent. All right. Get a drink of water here and we'll talk about the second obstacle here. <coughs> Like I said, I'm going to sound like a broken record, but that's okay. I'm not going to jump into what we call lateral obstacles. Once again, obstacles being rated two different ways, crossing and lateral, this being the second. And those obstacles defined as penalty areas, out of bounds, and extreme rough. This is just the next page on your, on your, in your guide now with your new labels, right? It should look like, I'm sorry, I should have open. It should look like this. Flip it over. Should look like this here. All right. And what we're doing, what this is replacing, what this is overlaying is page 29, which is the water hazard page uh, in the course rating 
uh, system. Uh, the lateral uh, will include all penalty areas as well as out of bounds and extreme rough. Uh, with an adjustment to cover out of bounds and extreme rough, and that goes to I believe the gentleman sort of in the back middle uh, question, or maybe in the back, way in the back. Uh, he says, "We are we treating penalty areas and out of bounds the same under the same you know lateral?" I said, "Yes, we are, but we do have an adjustment built into this new page, right? That specifically looks at stroking distance issues, right? Stroking distance penalties, right?" So, when we look at the weightings uh, for stretch and bogey for both par fours and fives and the par threes, um, you'll notice that uh, the scratch golfers par four and five weightings for this category did not change, right? Status quo. The bogey golfer, like I said, went from 14% down to 10. This just goes back to my conversation that I had earlier, right? The bogey golfer, male or female, doesn't matter, finds it more intimidating that he, he or she has to uh, negotiate the penalty area, the extreme rough, whatever the case may be, as opposed to sort of playing away from that. Scratch golfers tend to not, not worry about that, that too much you know, in their mind, right? And within the par fours and fives, all these numbers that we have here currently, they add up to 100% well in decimals, and they add up to one, and the par threes add up to 0.8. So we look at 100% of these values, we look at 80% of these total values here. And on the par threes, we, you know, we, we increase them by, by 0 0.03 uh, on the previous uh, slide to this. On this one, we decrease them by 0 0.3. So it was just a, a compromise that the course rating committee thought of and, and looked at while going through this to make sure we maintain that 100% and that 80% weightings for all the for all the obstacles. Any questions on that? Yeah. Could, could you give some guidance on obstacles over the green as to what, what type of percentage adjustment uh, to give to that? That's a, that's a great question. Um, you know, obstacle, we, we say obstacles over the green within the guy, in the front of the guy. They say, you know, based on our accuracy tables that you see, you know, don't have as much impact because balls only about eight percent of golf balls actually get to uh, behind the green. So we 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 say use it your best judgment, use the guideline based on you know minus you know reducing whatever value that you get by one or two, based on you know the, the rating. Not necessarily using a percentage, but you know subtracting one or two uh, in the current guide. We are looking at possibly. Uh, using language that says using a percentage or using, you know, different adjustments. But right now in the current guide, it says minus one or two. Minus one or two. Yeah, correct. Because like I said, only about eight, less than 10% of golf balls actually get behind the green um, based on research and data that, that we've got. All right. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, just from the newer group, for drop areas where you that's covered somewhere in here, or? For drop areas. So yeah. like a local rule with a drop area? Yeah, like, you know, you hit a drive and you get to go to a drop area 150 yards closer to the, away from the tee. Is that? So I'd have to double check in the manual. And it's not in the guy. I know that. I have to double check the manual. I don't believe it is in the manual. Um, you know, because drop areas sometimes are specific to actual tournaments that, right. that the course may set up, um, just to keep pace going through, but right now there are no adjustments based on, it. you know, a, what you what you call a drop area okay. or a perfect. Mm -hmm. I know manual pretty well, but I have to get my microscope yeah, out. Of course, that play has a long carry. And, sure. And to just to keep people from hitting shots over and over again. No, no, yeah, hit, right. You know. So, you know, and as you know, it's, there's, you know, we, we, we keep a set of standards within the baselines. If, if you, I'm not sure of your experience level with rating. Zero. Um, <laughs> I got you. So within the, and that's a great question. So within the course rating guide, there are certain baselines and guidelines that we use for drive distances for the scratch and the bogey golfer for both men and women. And so we apply that, those standards, while we're rating the golf course. You know, we certainly understand that not all golfers, all golfers are built differently. And we understand that golfers, you know, you know, short game may be their forte or 
their their long game might be the forte, you know. But we have a set of standards that we that we use as a baseline to figure out what the course rating should be. So. Yes, in the back. Oh, what happens when you have a penalty area, let's say to the left, 25 yards from the center? Yeah. To the right, you have OB 30. Mm -hmm. Now, 25 obviously closer. That's what we normally use. But the OB, you have an uh, extra penalty. Do you use the K there, or? So I'm actually. So you're. So I'm going to actually jump into this next slide. I'm going to certainly talk through. Uh, that 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 question specifically because that is going to be a, certainly a common one, right? But I'll certainly get to that. I'll get to your answer, but just I'll put it on pause for about a minute, okay? Perfect. All right. Here's that that table and, and, and page that I showed you. And first question is I always get is yes. This is what the page looks like for this year in 2019. Uh, it's only going to look like this for 2019. I understand we had to certainly condense a lot of a lot of items down into into a, a small area. So yes, men and women will share a table for this year, and I want to stress the remainder of this year. So six more months or whatever the case may be. So when we when we are rating, especially on the lateral, just make sure if we're rating for men, we're used, we're looking at the black text. You know, on either side, and for women, we're looking at the red text uh, on either on either side. Like I said, we're re we're going to lay out, lay out this page a lot differently in the next version of the book next year when we print new manuals and new guides. But for this year alone, yes, this is how the page is laid out. So it it, it was a uh, an, an unfortunate compromise that we had to make it like this just on the space available. So, um, I want to talk specifically, right, about what this gentleman was talking about earlier, right? And this is that new adjustment. So if you look under the adjustments, it's the second one there, it's, which is new for 2019. It is the K adjustment, right? And so what it says is, if an area is not treated as a lateral penalty area and a stroking distance penalty applies, local or not, such as OB and where the ball is uh, likely to be lost in ER, right? So what does that mean? So going back to that gentleman's question in the, in the back there, in the back corner, right? He said he had out of bounds on the right hand side off the tee, you had a penalty area on the left side off, off the full tee shot. You know, what do we do? Just like we did in previous iterations, whether it was a water hazard or you know, out of bounds ER, we go to the center of my fairway landing zone. I'm going to look left, get my number for the penalty area that's to my left. Let's just say it's 25. I, you know, I'm just throwing numbers out there. 25, right? It's a penalty area, right? So we're, you know, all things being equal, there's no bounds. We don't apply a K, right? Because there's no lost ball component to it, right? If I would hit my ball in that penalty area, I just drop it, you know, along you know margin of the of the of the penalty area, you know, two club lengths and, and play on with one stroke penalty, right? So I get my number 25 to the left, you know, get that value, apply the K. So 25 would be off a full tee shot for a scratch golfer would be a five, and same for a bogey golfer would be a five, right? If if we're, we're giving full value, we're not. I'm not going to percentage. I'm just looking at full values right now. Then I look at the K adjustment on the right side, right? Because I got that out of bounds of that, just like that gentleman had said, right? So off the tee, full tee shot. I said, you know, 30 or 30, let's just say 32 yards right. Set on the fairway, measure 32 yards right. Full tee shot is a three for both golfers. Right, for both bogey, or for both scratch and bogey. There's no bounce. We just I'm just we're just gonna keep this example very simple. We apply the K. It's out of bounds, right? Yes, we would apply the K. So this goes back to my statement earlier when we talked about we found that, that local rule. Who 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 here has heard of the new local out of bounds rule? 
everybody familiar? Okay, so everybody's familiar with finding the nearest fair, you know, finding, you know, I'm not a rules guy, I'm just sort of, you know, simplifying the statement. Find the nearest fairway, take a two stroke penalty, keep on playing golf as opposed to going back to the tee and hitting three, you're hitting four from the fairway. I mean, I'm, I'm just simplifying the rule. You won't, you won't read like that in the rule book. <laughs> I'm, I'm simplifying, right? So, with that three, I look at the K off the tee, I thought there's no bounds. I'm going to apply that K because it's shot specific because I got that, that out of bounds. Whether it would be out of bounds or extreme rough, it wouldn't matter because there's a lost ball component to that penalty if I hit it in there. And then I would look to, because I said it's out of bounds, there's no percentage, right? Because, you know, if you hit the ball out of bounds, tough tokus, you know, it's, you're, you're out of bounds. So, um, and then look at the, these other adjustments as well. So that's how you look at it. So, so if so, we had a five with the penalty area. We had a four. You know, we had a three off the chart with the out of bounds plus the K for the penalty area is a four. You know, five is more valuable than a four, at least from the fairway landing zone. You know, so we'll know that if if we're taking the fairway landing zone based on those two numbers. You know, if you're an experienced rater, you know you got to go to the green and then you know do the same, look at the same things. But that five would, would trump the four, and you would use the five as your lateral number there, because it's it's you're, you you need to give the golfer their their just due and, and their full value that they deserve. Yeah, I'm not sure who asked. Rose. Okay, so building on that example, yeah, order, order left down bounds right. I follow what you say. It's it's four to the left and it's five to the right. So yeah. right down five. Now the next hole. Just has out of bounds on the right and no water, same yardage. Okay, it would get a also a five. It seems like there's a difference because on one hole you had obstacles on both sides. The next hole you only have obstacles on one side, uh, but they both get a five uh, rating. That doesn't that doesn't seem intuitively correct. Sure. No, and I certainly see, we we had this this sort of the same situation. Uh, in the previous, in the previous guy. So if you think about it, if I had out of bounds running both sides of the fair, or you know, outside, you know, outside the rough, and then you look 32 and 25, I think were my numbers. I would only get one value, right? Would be the five. You know? mm. And then I would go to the, and then I go to the green if there was something at the green. But then if I would have in the old system, if that was out of bounds, five, and water hazard, three. I get eight points. So, just you know, is 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 it easier if so? We we've always had this issue, and we're always trying to better the system. But currently, that's you know, that's sort of the thought process is. But under the old I have, under the old system, you give it a water rating and an out of bounds rating. Sure, right? but but it's like it, it all it, it all collectively adds, we all collectively add the points together in order to get the course right. the course rating right. We don't look you know we we. we you know, weigh them and then you know we add them all together and, and we get. All right, I get it. So it's, yeah. it's it's we thought about it. And yes. This yeah. is, where this, we're is do this, it. this is this is this yeah. is sort of uh, sort of the old uh, mother or father says because I said so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, because this is a shot specific adjustment. Yeah. It's conceivable that you could have two fives because of the K adjustment. Sure. And trigger the two. Two adjustment. Way, you are way ahead of me right now. Oh, yeah, you are way ahead. Of, yeah. So that's going to be one of the things uh, that we'll talk about. But yes, absolutely. There's there's a two adjustment, just like in, in crossing. But there is. Otherwise, it would not have. Sure. And that's and, and so you could apply if there was a penalty area uh, at the beginning. Let's just say that first landing zone that got to a five, right? And you got to the green, and there's another out of bounds at the green that triggered a five. In the old system, those are two different, you know, two different. Items or obstacles in this system, they're looked at as the same. So that's yes. Um, I'm looking. Oh, I'm looking at the same question, but from the Raiders' perspective, sure. out in the field, sure. where we've got these two measurements, and we have to stop in the middle of everything to determine which measurement is going to give us the rating. While there are people, maybe we're trying to, you know, keep ahead of, behind sure. us, and stuff like that. So in looking at Form one, um, I don't know how they could incorporate this, but increase that penalty area to include like two measurements. So one we did. So we. Did, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to 
Yeah, like, like I mean, we, we did we did update our, our version of the form one. I'm not sure if your cap, how many captains are in this room right now. I'm not sure if they create their own individual form one. Well, the one that that was on the table. Um, is that I, I, didn't, I didn't see that, so I, I, oh, okay. I, I didn't see which. Because I, I, it, I, I would much, was, I'm sorry. I would much rather be a raider in the field who could grab the two numbers sure. and not have to make the decision until I get back in and Absolutely. start really grinding on the numbers. Absolutely, and getting those, and, and getting those. Let's just say it's the first hole. So getting, if you have one of those situations where you got, you know, two measurements left and right, and you got to figure it out. I think you know the best case scenario is just getting those values, knowing which adjustments apply to those values. So for example, the one side had the K adjustment, the one side didn't have a K adjustment. So just saying, you know, let's just say 20, 25, and the other was, I, I, I forget, 30, 30, 32, 32. 32. Yeah. Just put, you know, to, you know, first landing, you know, there's a slide on our new, new updated form one that says first landing zone, you know, 25, and then whatever adjustments apply, slash 32, whatever adjustments apply, move on to the next landing zone. Or, or center of the green, whatever you know, the case may be. Right. So not necessarily getting your numbers you know, within the fairway itself, the table values, just knowing what adjustments apply. Because we can go into the table values at the end of the round, or the end of the rating session, right? And we can get our table values, apply our adjustments, get our values, and turn them into our captains, or whatever the process that you guys uh, have. I know these are, and, and, and guys, I, I, you know, with these new penalty areas and out of bounds, you know, I rated at my last job in the Northern Ohio Golf Association, and certainly this is a certainly a change, and it's, and it's, and I'm going to show some examples here later as how to sort of walk through the process and how to how to do this. So, you're, you, we're going to stub our toe a little bit here and there. We're going to get tongue tied. Our brains are going to get twisted into a little bit of a pretzel every once in a while. But just know, just sort of as you work through these things, as we get out on the golf course, as we see these things, excuse me, um, it'll start to get easier and easier. I think, you know, we can all say the first time we ever rated a golf course, it was probably a little disheartening inside. You look at these tables and these guys and these adjustments and this book, and you're like, oh my God, I just, you know, wanted to be outside in the sun for a couple hours. You know? <laughs> I'm retired. So, you know, it's... It's it's a new concept, and and, and believe me, we, we struggle. I you heard me up here saying water hazard unintentionally when I meant to say penalty area. It's going to happen, and, and, and just understand that that you can always rely on the the Metropolitan Golf Association, or you know, give us an email or at the USGA. We'll certainly happily walk walk you through the thought process on a landing zone by landing zone or center of the green. All right, good questions. Just, we've done a couple of ratings already with the <coughs> system, and uh, yes. rest assured, I think it's easier now than it was before. Can I, can I get a testimony? <laughs> Put it on our website. Uh, yeah. <laughs> she's my favorite so far. <laughs> 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 So let's go through a couple more adjustments here. Uh, let's talk about this uh, this S adjustment, right? Very similar to what we had in previous in previous years, especially with the water hazard, right? You still got to have a five green target uh, in order to uh, uh, to qualify, and uh, any value for the uh, any value for the uh, bogey golfer, right? But we have to also look at you know. Surrounding the screen could be penalty areas, out of bounds, extreme rough, right? So that three kind of cat, those three items within this lateral category can sort of be blended together in order to make this surround. So yes, extreme rough could lead into a penalty area, and that can make up the surround around the green, right? As long as you know it meets these qualifications. Uh, well, really, only uh, scratch has the qual has the five qualification of uh, of after the table value plus adjustment. So, and then here you'll notice that this chart right here, um, if you remember the old the old chart, the old surround chart and water hazard, it looks a lot smaller. Um, we reduce the size of it as well. Um, we do we have no plus threes uh, 
uh, adjustments within this table. We still do have the uh, plus two there with that, that dagger for R and R, which if you're an experience raider, you know what that means. Uh, you know, you add an extra point uh, within your R and R number. Uh, I'm not going to get into too much details because this certainly your rating captains will understand that 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 idea. But that plus two dagger for you, experience raiders, that would still apply. You know, going back to R and R and adding that one. Yeah. Uh, on the surround, uh, some of it's water, some of it's OB. Yeah. So, so how do you handle it? It's, so we've got to sort of wrap our brain around thinking it's, one, it's, it's all one. So when you say it's out of bounds, right, are we, you know, we, we would take that, that portion, we get our number, let's just say, to the right, right? And that, that number for that out of bounds is, you know, from the center of the green is, you know, whatever that number is, 20, uh, 28 or whatever that number is. We would apply that K, we would apply that K, and then we would figure out from there, we would look at the surround independently and say, all right, where does the out of bounds, you know, sort of bleed into that penalty area? And then there's another caveat, which you see underneath this note here, that says, if a percentage adjustment has been used, uh, the green surround should not be included of uh, any area that's rated at less than 50%. So what that's saying is, if within that penalty area uh, that this gentleman asked about, right, if it's a dry lake most of the year, right, where the water levels are very low and, and some, a player, if their ball ends up into it, can you know, go down into the dry creek and, or dry pond, hit out and play, whatever the case may be, excuse me, then we wouldn't include that, you know, because they, they can play out of it three quarters of the time that they're, they're doing. So you've got to almost paint an imaginary line if you're using that percentage adjustment and saying, okay, from here to here, my player can play that ball out of here, out of this penalty area, three out of four times, you know, and I'm using, you know, simple percentages. So this is not going to be included within that surround, within that surround. Right, and this this is where discussions, just quick discussions at the green, uh, that I'm sure you guys have on a, you know, whether it's at the green or on the tee of the next hole that you're rating, you know, what do you guys think about that that penalty area? What did you guys think about that surround? Is it, you know, I, I'm sure we all have those you have those discussions about green surface. I'm sure moderately contoured or you know, what did you guys see, you know, on that green? So it's it's a lot of it's just an additional conversation that that you all have either in the clubhouse or after the after the rating session, right? Or you uh, have it on the next tee, right? So it's just, you know, talking about it and, and, and getting it uh, together. All right, any questions, any other questions? All right, I've got some uh, here lateral examples, right? And uh, these uh, these top, these two pictures here on your right, right here, uh, they're pretty self-explanatory. Got you know red stakes, red stakes. That's you know is defined as a, a pen, uh, as a penalty area. You know there that's you know laterally there's a fairway. The fairway's over here for this gentleman here. Um, here uh, we've got out of bounds stakes right here where the, these gentlemen are hitting their tee shots over here. So. Just an example of what falls under this category. Down here at the bottom, I've got this, I've got this tall grass right here that sort of breaks from what I'll call the primary rough. Certainly if I hit the golf ball in here, I'm certainly dead beat, right? Um, over here to my bottom left, this is Tony Finau. This is another St. Andrews hole, the 18th hole at the on the golf course at St. Andrews. We've got right here on the right side where the, the gallery is. There's also right behind them the shops and restaurants and, and different things on the street. So the prop where the property line ends is out of bounds. So that's just an example there. And then of course here you all probably will see if you've never seen this hole before, you'll see it in June uh, at the US Open. It's the 18th hole at Pebble Beach. It goes back to that gentleman's question about having you know penalty area on one side. You got a big old penalty area on this side, right? You got this water right here. And over here on the right side, we've got these beautiful homes that I can't afford right here on the right hand side, which is property lines, right? So when we get to our landing zones, I get my number to the left, my, my yardage to the left, 
get my yardage to the right, apply the appropriate adjustments, move on down the fairway, and then go to the next landing zone or the green, and, and, and you know, subsequent numbers as well. Yeah. On the center bottom. Center bottom. This one? You're talking? Okay. There's, there's a possibility you just want to find the ball that played as unplayable. Would you percentage that? This? You're getting it in here? <laughs> what if you find out to see the ball that's right? Well, okay. I, I'm, I'm sure there's a percentage chance that you would find your ball. <laughs> I mean, I, I would never say any absolutes, but I would say 99 out of 100 times, if my golf ball is hitting in here, so just one, I'm probably not finding it, but two, I'm not going to look for it. Uh, so I would say, I don't know, I would say this, I mean, I, I know there's a possibility of finding we, we understand there's a possibility of finding it, but what is the likelihood that this ball is going to be? Uh, and that's where that's why we talk about in increments of 25, 50, 75 percent, 75 percent, right? Well, further to that point, yeah, the new guidelines for marking golf courses uh -huh. suggest that you may mark that as a lateral penalty area. Well, the whereas previously you couldn't unless it was legitimate. Well, we give them. We I think I say we the rules the the, the rules committee and. The, the people in the room that wrote the book, they gave guidance that one, with this gentleman said, yes, they could, they can say, this has now become a lateral penalty area, right? And that's fine. We have no problem with that, right? Even if there's no red stakes here, they could say, you know, for my daily play, for, you know, because I don't want there to be six hour rounds out there if there's a lot of this out there. This is going to be a lateral penalty area. So if that's the case, if we go out on the golf course right now, and this is on a lot of holes, right? And we're under the assumption that this is just extreme rough, it's not rated, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not uh, marked, excuse me, with red stakes. Anyway, let's just say we do that. We go out on the golf course, we get all of our numbers, we apply all of those Ks, right? To however many holes, 13 holes, you know, whatever the, the amount of holes, or how many times we Right? And we get back into the golf shop and uh, your rating captain goes to the professional staff and they say, man, there's a lot of that tall grass out there. You guys are probably gonna have, you know, six hour rounds out there when, when you guys are you guys are playing golf trying to turn you know money through the uh, cash register. They say, oh no, we actually play those as lateral penalty areas. You go, oh, okay. <laughs> so all we have to do, right? All we have to do is take one number off of all those holes, right? Right, we applied a K, now we just take the K away. So if we got, let's just say this ended up being a four after everything, we just take it down one point to a three. Right, we don't have to go out back out there. Even if that conversation happens a month later, you know, the golf pro professional calls, us, you know, Kevin Klein or Tim at the, uh, at the Metropolitan Golf Association saying, Jimmy, Christmas, six hour rounds, it's killing my profits. We gotta, we're, we're, we gotta keep playing movement. Say, so, okay. So the golf course can say that where the primary rough breaks to this you know, extreme rough, I think this is the definition of, you know, if I had an example, I can't find a better example of extreme rough right there, right? They can say where the primary rough breaks to that extreme rough, that is the margin of the hat, that is the margin, excuse me, of the penalty here. Caught myself on that. That is the margin of the penalty here. So they would, you know, take the line where the ball last cross, get their two club lengths, Continue to play golf, right? In the back. If, you, if that were a cross, if you were hitting your drive over that, would yeah. it automatically be extreme rough? <coughs> would it automatically be extreme rough? Um, you know, they, they could mark it as a, they could mark it yellow. I mean, we, we don't say they have, no, but there, there's only, so if it's it marked, yeah, sure. And if it's 50 yards in front of the tee, you had to hit the ball over that stump. Yeah. Wouldn't that be viewed as a crossing? Yes. Being rough? Yeah, so if I'm hitting, so instead of, so I'm hitting like this way? Yes. Yes, I mean, it, it would be, it, you, you could either be called extreme rough or a penalty. If you had a golf with him, he, he would probably go that way. <laughs> well, even so, so sir, there's no, so there's no K adjustment within the actual crossing obstacle, so there's only two adjustments within the crossing. There's a percentage and there's a two. So this, you know, I guess, for lack of better words, if it, if it was extreme rough and you 
had to hit it over it, right? right? It would be a hundred. It would probably be a hundred percent, right? You give it a hundred percent value. If it was a penalty area, and you had to hit over this, it was marked yellow. You would give it a hundred percent value because if I hit the ball in there, it's a hundred percent value, right? Yes. I mean, I'm, I'm not finding that golf. So the 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 net result <laughs> in your case, it's the same. It's the same. Great questions. Good question. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. I wanted to talk, and I believe it was her comment about the, the two adjustment, right? So, in the past, the two adjustment was used when two or more shots, whether in the you know 2018 version of the guide, you know, out of bounds, extreme rough, water hazard, and each rating had to be five or greater, uh, table value plus adjustments on the two uh, on the two separate shots. You'd add those fives together if they were or five or more uh, together. Mm -hmm. If they were 11 or less, you'd add plus one to that higher value. Or if they totaled 12 or more, you added two to that higher value. So, sort of similar within um, the new world, I'll call it. Uh, moving forward, uh, if an obstacle, well, like I said, an obstacle, penalty area, out of bounds, the extreme rough must be crossed on two or more shots. Each of those shots has to be a five or greater table value plus adjustments whether you're a scratch golfer, whether you're a bogey golfer, excuse me, the, the adjustment is made to the higher of those two uh, in the random shots, right? So we're going to add all the fives together that we have to cross. If they total 11 or less, we add one to that higher value. If they total 12 or more, we, are, we add two to that crossing. Same thing with the uh, lateral obstacle. Just going to sound like a broken record here. Just with lateral obstacles. Those lateral obstacles, or when we talk about lateral obstacles, we're talking about penalty areas, out of bounds, and extreme rough. They come into play laterally on two or more shots. Each shot must have a five or greater value, table value plus adjustments. The adjustment is made to the higher of the two separate shot evaluations. You add all the fives or greater, and if they total one or less, at one point, if they total 12 or more, two points. Right. I'll have an example here later uh, here in a couple slides about this, this specific two adjustment here. The ninth hole here, beautiful ninth hole of Pebble Beach. I've got my team ground right here and my tee set right here. So if we can all turn to that lateral page in our guides, right? that new sticker that has the men's and women's chart together. All right, let's do an example here real quick just to see if we can't get the correct value, uh, final value, right? So I've got a whole length of 465 yards for men and 390 yards for women. And I just want to say we're only looking at the scratch golfer in this example, just so we can, so we're going to keep this simple. Right? 465 men, 390 for women. Scratch golfer. At my first landing zone, 25 yards laterally right of the center of the fairway landing zone, I've got no recovery of a penalty area. So full tee shot, laterally right, center of the fairway. At the green, from the center of the green, laterally right, I've got a penalty area with no recovery, 18 yards laterally right. right? So we're going to take this step by step here. What would be my table value just based on a full tee shot, 25 yards laterally right to a penalty area with no recovery? Five. Five. Got it. Everybody see us, the new Raiders, newer Raiders in the room. Everybody see how we got that number. Bottom row, go across, find where 25 yards falls, and we get our, our table value, right? So now, we have our hole lengths for both men and women, scratch golfers. We know how far they hit the full tee shot for both men and women. We should be able to figure out, based on the hole length, what is our distance into the hole and getting our table value. So, for men, 250 less from 465. Women, 210 from 390, right? What will be into an 18, laterally right with no recovery, what is that number? You got it, right? New Raiders, like I said, those are our baselines 
and, and I'm sure once you start getting you know your feet wet with your captains, you'll understand uh, what we're talking about with these you know first shots, second shots, and, and where bogey and scratch golfers can hit. So, so just sort of like my my top heading talks about this lateral example. I've got a five off the table in my landing zone. I got a five off the table at the center of the green. What happens? Yes. Just like so, is there any adjustments? And I'm circling. Two. You got it. You got to get two. You got it. So at landing zone one, it's a five. At the green, it's a five. Five plus five. I can even do that math. That's ten. I'm going to apply a plus one to the higher of those two numbers. Now, it just so happens that these two numbers are the same, so it doesn't matter. My final lateral rating is a six. That is what I'm going to put down on my form one. That is what I'm going to put down for, for the scratch call. All right, everybody see that? Where we got that? Okay. Now, I think over a. I can go back and real quick and. I skipped over, maybe I went through that pretty quick. So let's do a, a bogey golfer crossing example here. So flip the page in reverse, one to a crossing example here. 535 yard hole for men, 405 yard hole for women. As you can somewhat see here, I've got the team ground right here. I've got extreme uh, rough right here that I call ER number one. Might be hard to see in the back with the text. But I've got ER number two here, so we'll go through this. We're only looking at bogey golfers here right now. So, I've got, <coughs> I've got uh, extreme rough, 140 yards for men and 100 yards for uh, women to carry safely. I've got 145 yards for men and 105 yards to get to ER number two for the landing zone with no recovery. So if we take a look at the, uh, the bogey golfer at landing zone number one, 140, 100 yards to carry safely. It's a five off the table, right? right. Yeah. There's, no, there's no K adjustment in this category, right guys? Right. So it's just a five off the table. So we're going to do the same thing for landing zone number two, 145 and 105, respectively, men and women. That's also a five off the table. Yeah. We got two fives again, right? Mm -hmm. We all can do that math. So, landing zone one is a five, landing zone two is a five. I'm gonna add plus one to that final value, whichever the higher of the two. Like I said, we got the same number, so it doesn't matter. So the crossing final rating for these bogey golfers, six. 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 All right. 11. 11 or less. 11 or less. All right. Now, if your brain isn't already in, into a pretzel, I'm gonna do my best here. All right, like I said earlier, we look at these obstacles as sort of the overarching category is obstacle, right? You can rate it two different ways, uh, crossing and laterally. So let's take a look at an example here. I've got my team ground right here. I've got a penalty area off the tee shot, right? Right here, this pond or whatever this is. It's a penalty area. On the left-hand side here at the fairway landing zone, I've got out of bounds here on, on the left-hand side. So let's just walk through this example right now. My whole length is a 380 yards or 320 for, for women. We're going to take a look, everyone, at the scratch golf for only, just to, you know, so otherwise the page would be very cluttered. All right? The crossing penalty area is 45 yards to carry safely for the, scra for the golfer's scratch. Laterally out of bounds is 37 yards laterally left from the center of the fairway. So once I get to the full tee shot, I look left, it's 37 yards, right? <coughs> and there's no out of bounds at the green, so everything is, is sort of in this box right here of what we're talking about. So my crossing value is what off the table for any adjustments? Zero. Zero. You got it. What is my lateral value off, just off the table? Three. You got it. Three. Any adjustments to that? No. You sure? I've got out of bounds. I knew you were my favorite. I said that earlier. 
We've got to apply that K adjustment. Why do we have to apply the K adjustment every morning? It's out of bounds or extreme rough. If we read the category, there's a stroke and distance penalty to it, whether it's the local rule or whether it's the I'll say traditional that we're used to. Go back to the T and you know do it again, right? So we got to add that K. So my final crossing value is a zero. My final uh, lateral value is a four. And yet I have here down in the bottom exists on the whole crossing obstacle. We are acknowledging the existence of the obstacle, right, through the lens of the la of lateral, right, because we have. We, we, we are now in the book, for those new raiders, we talk about this, the, the existence of obstacles, right, at the beginning of the book. We are acknowledging the existence of the overall category obstacle through the lens of the lateral because we have a lateral number, right? Does everybody see how we get that, that we can have a zero here and a four, and a four uh, for lateral? Because we, we, we've acknowledged the existence of said obstacle, the penalty area, the out of bounds, the extreme route through the lens of lateral. We, we, now let's, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not sure who, right. but I'm not if, sure who the, their buzzer first. Okay. If, if, in <laughs> fact, if, if in fact there were no out of bounds. So I've got an example. Okay. Through the right. magic of technology, no. I've got an example. Okay. okay. So, like, I, like I, I knew where the question was going, so <laughs> I'm going to jump ahead of you. Right? Let's just say we get to the next hole. Right? And we've got a very similar look, except, bingo, that out of bounds is non existent, right? It's part of what we call now the general area in the new world, what we used to call through the green, right? It's just part of the golf course. There's no out of bounds at the landing zone. I've got the same hole lengths, 380, 320, respectively, men and women. I've got the same carry safely distance of 45 yards for both scratch golfers, right? And there's no recovery. Crossing value is a zero off the table, correct? I'm sure. I'm just looking right off the table. And there's no out of bounds in this example, right? There's no out of bounds here. Well, what, is, what, what is that though? Is that going to be extreme rough there? It doesn't. I'm just saying it's, it's gone. I'm just. No, I'm just. I, before, 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 I, before I said, I said it's general area through the. Through, I'm not. That's, that's what we're saying. Okay. The, prop, the property lines that were there are no longer there. Okay. Okay. But there's no OB in this example. Right? So what do we do? I've got to acknowledge the existence of this because there is a penalty area obstacle, right? There is that obstacle to fill that. So my final crossing value is a 1. Right? Remember back when, we, when I said we didn't want to reintroduce additional points. Because the scratch, in this example, the scratch golfer here, right, 999 times out of 1,000, probably even more, is going to blow it over this, right, uh, when there's, you know, certainly there's a, the out of bounds that they're negotiating here on the left hand side is certainly their bigger trigger point, which would be more difficult. So that's why on, on this left example here, I was able to get this to zero and this is four. But I've got to at least acknowledge the existence of this penalty area crossing because it does exist on the whole. I can see it, it's within my 50 yard box that we talk about in course rating. Uh, for you new course raters, we talk about a 50 yard box starting at the tee, ending at the center of the green, and going out 50 yards left and right of the center of the trail. So, but the key here is that that's not noted yeah. in, in your, so for the raters in this yeah. room, I, the key takeaway here sure. is if it's zero, zero, it become, and, and it does exist. Sure. And, and, and to your it's point, one, there's one zero. It's not noted in any section of the guide. Like I said, it's only noted at the beginning of the guide, just because if we kept noting it within trees, within you know whatever the case may be, it would just become redundant. Right. Okay. It's just it's at the beginning of the book, and just for for simplicity's right. sake, right. we're but not redu case, redundantly saying. Right, but this is a case where there is actually a zero, which yeah. is. Becomes a one. It becomes a one. Right. And the lateral is a zero. Yeah, because there is nothing. There's, there's no. There's nothing. Zero, one, right. zero. Whatever these are, trees or whatever that is. Yeah. Right. Okay. So in that example, which example? The second one we're talking about. Let's just say instead of no OB, no stakes. 
I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Hey guys, she's, she's trying to answer questions. So if, in that second example, there's no out-of-bounds stakes, but there's high festive. Sure. That's penalty error. So we revert back to the first example. That you correct? Correct. Well, that high fescue would be, can, I, you know, whatever that, I'm not sure what the golf course, if that course is going to call that penalty area, they're going to mark it with red. red no, they may not call it anything. But you well, then that, would be, that would be a street drop. If they're not, they're not going to call it anything, it would be then that would be, it would qualify if, if we're talking like waste right. high fescue. Exactly. That qualifies based on the definitions within our guide. That would fall within the category of extreme. Which was your first example. Exactly. Right. Okay. Exactly. Same, same situation. Trees. Yeah. You get a dead line of trees all the way down that fairway. Yeah. And what typically would be, I would call it um, intermittent high grass fescue, you know, wispy kind of stuff where you can recover from. Yeah. It's not marked out of bounds. We used to treat, we treated that as OB. Extreme rough. Well, it's extreme. So, yeah, extreme rough. Again, go back to the first example. You go back to the first example, you would apply that K and then. It, the, the order of the adjustments are specific so that you would apply that K, and then we would look at percentaging down based on if there's a bounce after the K, and then we would percentage right. it down based on the wispiness as, as you eat. So you'd have the K, you could have the K and the base. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. You, you always apply the K on ER and out of bounds. Always, always, always. Always. The percentage is, is there was mindfulness and thoughtfulness to become immediately after that because you apply it all the way. But then we gave the Raiders the essence to say, all right, now that we've applied both those, the B and the K, now we can percentage it down to where it needs to be. I got a couple more. I know we want to get on the golf course here, guys. We'll take a couple more questions, then we'll get out of there. Don't you have to know ahead of time what the course, if it marks it as a penalty area? Or not because if it's a penalty area, that's one way of rating it. If sure. it's not, it's a, it, it's a lost ball and sure. it's a broken distance. So when we rate, we have to know that ahead of time. Sure. When we go out. So I, I would say this if you don't know ahead of time, right? Fake. Fake. No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> no. If it's not, let's just, I, I'm just going with the example. If it's not, if there's not red or yellow stages, right? right. It's just tall, we're just talking tall grass, right? In your mind, it's extreme rough. Rated as extreme rough through all 12, 13, however many holes there is extreme rough. And then you go back in the golf shop and they say, you know what, it's actually, we're playing that where the primary rough breaks to the fescue or, you know, tall grass. We're actually calling that the margin of the, of the penalty area. So <coughs> we take out as our eraser, erase that K on all those holes, and we're just eliminating the point on each, on each one. So, so going within that mindset of, you know, if, if that rating captain doesn't tell you it, just go within that mindset. If, if I see tall grass like fescue, rate it as extreme rough, and then subsequently afterwards, they can just take the point off. So I just, I, I don't want to get fixated on, you know, you're going to be standing in the middle of the fairway, just, you know, I don't, I don't want anybody pulling their hair out, you know, you know, deliberating. Is this don't extreme worry. rough or is this a penalty area? You know, if, you, if there's any doubt, just call it extreme rough, apply the K, you know, kind of move on, to the next to the next landing zone. And then when you get into the golf shop, you can have that conversation. And that's why pencils have erasers on it. If we need to erase something, you erase it. I'll take two more questions, and then I, we, we got to make sure we get out of the golf course because we're tight for time. Yes. Do you use the K adjustment if the ER rating is zero? Okay. Do you use the K adjustment to get it to one? If the ER, I don't know. I mean, I have to check it. So, so the lateral, it would only be laterally. No, the, it's, a, it's a crossing. There's no K, there's no K in the cross. You, no, you don't see the adjustment. You don't see a K in the cross. So there is no K in the cross. Exactly. Got it. Yep. Yes. One more. The last question, guys. We got, I'm sorry. We got to get out of the door. I promise my last question. Yes. In 25 words or less. <laughs> okay. I know it's not in the book, but what is the reason for adding the one to that double zero before it grows? Why might we come up with one when it was 50 yard shot? Because, it because we, so within the guide, we have this concept called obstacles existing. We're stating that the obstacle is the top category, and we're rating it two different ways, crossing and lateral. In that second example, I have no lateral penalty area out of bounds, extreme rough. I only had that 45 yard penalty area crossing. 
I got to acknowledge the existence that it's there. I give it a point. I don't know if that was 25 words, but oh, sorry. All right. Um, why don't we do this? I'm going to sort of shut down my computer here real quick. Guys, uh, I don't know if you need to put your ten tennis shoes on or golf spikes on or whatever the case may be. Where do we want to meet, Tim? Uh, we're going to go to the 10th hole, which is a little par 3. It's just outside the clubhouse to the right. Yep. It's a short walk, and then we'll hop over to the 18th hole. If you need if you need to grab a cart, they do have some down, down at the pro shop, but they are lined up for golf.